So now we turn to this idea of, you know, uh, guarding one's privates within marriage. Before a young man gets married in our times nowadays, you know, they've watched a few movies here and there before they made Tawbah and they became religious. And they have this idea of what love is and what marriage is. And, you know, brothers come up to me all the time, brother man, I, I gotta get married, man. You know, as though like in their head, once they get married, all their temptations are just gonna poof, disappear. And life is gonna be bliss and we're gonna read Quran together, you know. And, <laughs> you know, it's gonna be just this spiritual experience, right? And there's this, this fantastic view of what marriage really is. Those of you that are married are probably not even laughing right now because they're like, what? <laughs> because, what is he talking about? <laughs> Because you don't even remember feeling that way, right? So, yeah, it, you know, it's many a times you do run into a brick wall because what is, what is shown to us about marriage, our idea of marriage, especially the modern mind, whether Muslim or otherwise, the modern idea of love and companionship and a man and a woman together, the idea of it is basically the same as dating. Okay? And dating means you have all the fun and when things get difficult, you walk away. That's what dating is, right? So what we actually, when we think of marriage, men, brothers and sisters even, when they think of marriage, they're thinking of the aspects of marriage that are like dating. But you know, there's a lot more to marriage than dating, right? There's the bills, and there's the chores, and then there's, you, have to, you have to learn to live with another person, which is very difficult. You do things your way, she does things her way. And now there's a towel hanging the wrong way, or the toothbrush is in a different place, or you know, something, there's a little too little sugar in your coffee or something, or little things start adding up and start, in the beginning I love her too much, I'm not gonna say anything, I can handle this. But a couple of years later it starts piling up and you're like, again with the sugar, you know? And it starts adding up. Now this doesn't happen in dating because you're tired of this girl, move on to the next one. Or she's tired of you, I, I think, you know, I, uh, I don't wanna deal with your smell anymore, I'm out. You know, it's just walk away from it. But marriage is a serious commitment. And you know the terminology used in Quran is very strong. Al-Muhsanat, Al-Muhsinin. You know, Muhsin, you know the, the, the Ihsan, in Arabic, it's the, the word used for putting someone inside a fort, like a military camp. The idea of that is there are enemies outside, once you're inside this military facility, you're safe, right? So women are told, are described as women, are, are females that have been put inside the camp, a protection. And who's protecting them? The husband is. From everything, from sadness, from difficulty, from shamelessness, in terms of ignorance, he's protecting them, he's giving them an education, he's protecting them in every single way. And the, the one who wants to get married, Allah describes him, Muhsinin غَيْرَ musafihin. They are people who, they are, they are men who have the intention of bringing women into this fort, into their protection, to start families, not just to get their desires out. غَيْرَ musafihin. Musafih is someone who has hormones overtaking him, that's why he wants to get married, that's it. Right? So Allah changes our mindset about marriage. But if you marry for the right reasons, then you will have a healthy relationship with your wife. If you marry for the wrong reasons, and the wrong reasons are, I just, you know, I have hormonal problems, that's why I want to get married. And that's it. You know what? You're going to have a miserable marriage and you'll never be satisfied. And you probably, many of you learned this the hard way already. Because the intention was all messed up. The intention has to be to start a family, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to do, to increase the good in society. So now, the principle, the underlying principle in marriage, as it is in everything else in this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you worry about your obligations, and you forget about your rights. I know that sounds very harsh, but if you can do that, I mean experiment it for six months. For, forget about your rights, worry about your obligations. What can I do for my wife? What more can I do for her? Can I buy her a gift? I haven't given her anything for a long time. You know, if she makes a mistake, pretend like you didn't even, she didn't even make it, right? وَإِن تَصْفَحُوا وَتَغْفِرُوا تَعْفُوا وَتَصْفَحُوا تَصْفَحُوا means cover the page. When you cover a page, you can't see the previous page, right? So if your wife makes a mistake, you pretend like you don't even see it, right? Instead of bringing it up and again with this, you know? So you cover her mistakes, and you go out of your way to fulfill your side of the obligations. You go out of your way to show sabr and compassion and overlooking and even the hurtful comments, you don't respond to them except with a smile, etc, etc. You go out of your way to do your part. Because you know, when you start expecting 
You expect certain things from your wife. She should take care of me. I have physical needs. I have needs. I have psychological needs. She should give me company. She should be nicer to me. She should smile when I come home from work instead of frowning at me all the time and reminding me what groceries I didn't do or what laundry I forgot to finish, right? She should be nicer to me. There's always these expectations in your head. And you know the believer, who does he expect from? The believer expects from his Lord, right? Because everyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will disappoint your expectations. Da'uf al-talib wal matloob is a universal principle Allah azza wa jal revealed. The one who seeks, the one who demands is weak, has been weakened. And whatever he seeks has also been weakened, inherently weak. So, what, so long as you place any hopes in creation, you are necessarily going to be disappointed. You put hopes in your boss, he's going to give you a promotion, it's not going to happen. You know? You put hopes in a friend, he's going to come through, he gave you an appointment time, he's going to pick you up, he's going to be late. He's not going to be able to make it. You, you put hopes in creation, you put hopes in things, they will disappoint you. Allah Azza wa wants us to learn to place hopes only in Him. And then when this attitude is developed, then what happens is, if your wife gives you a little, you're very grateful because you weren't expecting anything. What, a lot of times what happens is, we read a couple of Islamic books, maybe a couple of a hadith about the rights of a husband and the rights of a wife, and what the crazy thing that happens is, husbands are reading about what husbands deserve, and wives are reading about what wives deserve. As opposed to the opposite. Husbands are supposed to be reading about what? What the wives deserve. But everybody's obsessed with themselves. They're selfish. Even when they come to Islam, they learn and they study that which serves them. So for example, parents, they may not know any Qur'an, but they know, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ يَحْسَانًا They know that one. They don't even know where it is in the Qur'an, but they know this by heart. Right? Why do they know this by heart? Because it serves them. Right? The men, they may not know much about Qur'an, but as soon as the wife says a word, الرِّجَالْ قَوَمُونَ عَلَى النِّسَاء Because it's self-serving. Now you're not a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're, you're using Allah's deen to serve yourself, right? So one has to understand, our deen first and foremost is a responsibility to fulfill our obligations. So we study and we learn, what, how do we excel with our wives? How does the wife excel with the husband? You know, I gave a khutbah some time ago about the rights of the wife and the husband. And you know, I made two handouts. One was advice for wives, one was advice for husbands. And I said it over and over in the khutbah. Don't read the rights of the husband, please, husbands. Don't read those, just read the rights of the wife. I made a handout for you, don't read the wife's handout. Read your handout. Twenty brothers come up to me after the khutbah. Brother, that handout for the wives, can you give me a copy? It's like, no, I can't give you a copy. <laughs> because you're gonna go home and say, see this, point number four right here? You've been missing out on this for six months. You know? This, and these are real problems in marriage. This can lead to a really serious turmoil in marriage. So you want to have a healthy relationship in marriage, you have to take care of your obligations.